Hello, my name is Emily Dureshi. Um, I am currently an employee of the River Institute. I'm typically um, a summer student um, doing education camps, uh, helping with field work. I've been doing some TA work. Um, yeah, and I've also done some volunteering. So uh, this poster I'm presenting today is about the Eurasian Tench. I did this as a synthesis poster back in the fourth year of my undergrad at Carleton University in a course run by Jacqueline Chapman. So we were tasked with creating a poster um, about something that interests us um, either in the freshwater systems or marine system. So I chose the Tench because it was uh, kind of newly discovered in the uh, St. Lawrence and I wanted to learn more about it. Um, so I will go through each section um, individually and then I will make a conclusion at the end about where the Tench is now in 2020 because um, for reference, this is from 2018. Um, so as an introduction, Obviously, um, invasive species do cause considerable risk for freshwater biodiversity worldwide. Therefore, prevention is key. So identifying uh, what needs to be done and what the ecological impacts of, these, of this fish is, is quite important. So the Eurasian tench, Tinka Tinka, is a large cyprinid species, which means it's actually a uh, large minnow, um, which is just like the common carp. Um, so it likes to prey on benthic invertebrates with a particular liking for mussels and snails. Um, so you can see in the image that it is kind of olive green in color and you can't see them very well, but they actually have uh, two small barbels on each side of its mouth. It also tends to have like an orange eye and the scales are quite small. And if you were to touch this fish, it's quite slimy, unlike say a bass or something like that. Um, so they like to um, hang out in slow moving, shallow and densely vegetated waters and are highly tolerable to low oxygen levels. Um, they can be found to survive in eutrophic areas and um, in doing this research in 2018, I found that this fish could apparently be shipped in a moist package across the sea and still survive. Whether or not that's true, I don't know, but that sure makes for a good invasive species. So where the tench is now, as of 2018. Um, so it is said to be invasive to many areas around the world, including Chile, uh, Chile, Australia, New Zealand, the United States, and most recently Canada. Um, the tench is particularly established in the Mississippi watershed, which is nearby to Canada. And um, in the context of Ontario, as of 2018, on the Ontario Invading Species Program website, it stated that the tench was not yet known to be in Ontario. I found this very intriguing back in 2018 because there were reports of tench being in Ontario that dated back to 2016 in Lake St. Francis, which is right near Cornwall. So in the summer of 2018, there were actually two tench caught in Akwesasne, Lake St. Francis, which shares water with Ontario. Um, and further upstream, um, there were tench caught and reported in the Bay of Quinte. So that's Belleville. So that kind of says that they were present in Ontario by this point. Um, so that was quite interesting. This is just a map that I made to demonstrate where the uh, fish were caught in 2018. So you can see there near Cornwall, Akwesasne, and then in Belleville. Um, so the ecological impacts of the tench in other invaded regions. Um, so in New Zealand, for example, the tench um, in combination with other species that we actually have around here um, have found to contribute to quite a few shifts in clear water lakes to be less vegetated, more turbid. Um, and then there's a reduction in snail and mussel biomass, uh, which would be expected with how they are apparently going to prey on these um, as well, because they prey highly on snails, which in turn prey on algae, tench can cause algal blooms. So some limitations to the potential tench invasion in Ontario. Tench do need warmer waters to spawn with an apparent minimum temperature of 10 degrees to initiate proper ova development. Um, so tench egg hatching success is apparently very low at about 30%. Um, and then stressful conditions have been found to promote poor tench growth. And this fish is already kind of generally known for its slow growth. 
Um, as well, there has been failed introductions of detention in some areas with unknown reasoning. However, it is questioned that perhaps maybe that failure was due to interactions with central kids, which is quite interesting to me. Um, the tench is also said to not be as successful in the invasion of new areas as compared to its relatives, such as the common carp or the grass carp. Um, as well, the tench is apparently seldom reproduced um, below a pH of 5.5, and there are apparently mortalities of juvenile tench found to be high at a pH below 7. So, with all of this, the predicted ecological impacts of the tench in Ontario would be that it would impair um, macrophyte growth and contribute to higher turbidity levels in the water due to disturbing sediments while they feed, much like the common carp. And then that they would compete with native benthic fish, such as a species of concern, that would be the river red horse, so we don't want to have that. And um, because of consuming uh, snails so high or so much that that they are likely to cause algal blooms if they are in high densities. And finally, um, I predict as well that they would prey on zebra and quagga mussels because they do eat um, shellfish. However, I will make a note that. Um, tench do not tend to reside in the same areas where you can find zebra and quagga mussels. However, if they were, if the tench were to cross paths with a, a zebra or quagga mussel, I have no doubt that they would try to consume it. So recommend, recommendations uh, going forward as of 2018 was to educate the public about the tench, which would include key identifying characteristics so that uh, recreational fishermen can dispose of any found fish and then to provide the public with information on who to contact when they catch a fish, or the tench, sorry, um, and that monitoring efforts should be implemented to mitigate potential impacts of this fish and to hopefully inhibit its dispersal. As well, further studies would be required to determine the ecological impacts of this fish and really should consider how climate change will impact the dispersal of the tench in Ontario, um, because with raising water temperatures, that should that would promote the um, survival of this invasive fish. So here are my references. There's quite a few here. And now the update of the tench in 2020. So this was this summer. That's me. Um, so that was a photo taken in Valleyfield, Quebec. So that's very close to Ontario. So in that little minnow viewer is a juvenile tench. We caught him while seining for um, a project by Christina Charette. Um, so this tench was caught near Valleyfield, as I said, um, and the tench have also been reported as being caught in Bainesville, Ontario and Lancaster. Um, so interestingly, the uh, Lancaster uh, catch was actually in my backyard, pretty much, which is quite, uh, well, sad because it's here, but also quite neat to me because I do find this fish very fascinating. Um, continued update. It is now considered invasive on the Invading Species Network um, website, so that's a good update. Um, the uh, broad scale ecological impacts are still said to be unknown, but they, set, they are said to maybe affect native species and water quality, as I predicted in 2018, um, as they do compete with native minnows, bullheads, and suckers. And they feed heavily on snails, as I've said, which graze on algae and can contribute to algal blooms. And of course, they stir up sediments leading to cloudy or turbid water. So thank you very much for watching this uh, synthesis poster um, talk. I really appreciate it. If you have any questions about the tench, want to chat about the tench, have any fun facts to share, I'd love to talk about it. I'm very interested in seeing what happens with this fish in the coming years. Thank you.